All right, in this video, we're going to look at uh, vertical circular motion uh, and juxtapose it against horizontal circular motion. And uh, this is coming off of the demos we did uh, with the pen penny hanging around, going around the, um, the hanger and the downy ball vertical, and then the water cup uh, going around in a, a vertical circle. So first of all, let's discuss some differences between horizontal circular motion uh, and vertical. Uh, with horizontal circular motion, there was the potential to have uniform circular motion. Um, and this is because when you have something moving in a horizontal plane, it's very easy to have a net y force of zero. Because whatever the uh, upward force of maybe the tension with the y component, or uh, if it's on a flat surface, the normal force, it's going to balance the force of gravity. Now, when we move into vertical circles, what happens is um, we can't have uniform circular motion anymore, or this is now um, gone out of the equation. And if you think about it, if we have an object, let's say this is a ball on a string moving in a vertical path. So this is no longer a bird's eye view, this is a cross-section view of the ball's motion. So I'm looking at it from the side as it moves around the circle. Notice that the tension in this case will always be centripetal. This will be FT. Always pulling towards the center of the circle, always providing a centripetal force to the ball as it goes through this uh, vertical circle. But what happens to gravity? At the top, FG is pointing centripetally, inward, because it's always down towards the center of the Earth. At the bottom, it's now pointing centrifugally, so outward, away from the center of the circle. So here you have gravity and tension working together to be a centripetal force. Here you have tension and gravity working against each other to provide a centripetal force. Now what happens at the outsides? On the right-hand side, and now we're assuming, um, you know, a, uh, well, I guess it really doesn't matter, but let's assume a counterclockwise rotation. As the ball goes from the bottom point to uh, the zero uh, theta or the positive x-axis, gravity now is acting against that motion. So here, what happens is the ball slows down because you have a, a force that's acting um, in the tangential direction. Tangential forces can cause V to change, the linear speed of the motion of the circular moving object. Now, as it gets to its peak height, now FG is acting in the tangential direction, but in the direction it's moving. So now it's going to begin to speed up. And so, and I'm sorry that this is a little bit unclear in terms of my my drawing, but anything moving in a vertical circle will have bouts of slowing down and speeding up because gravity is either acting against its linear speed and for its linear speed, against and for, and against and for. So you don't have a situation of uniform circular motion because of the direction of gravity. So let's take a scenario um, and let's start looking at uh, how we can quantify uh, some of the aspects of circular motion with a vertical circle problem. So in this one we're going to look at a roller coaster car. And we'll take, take you out to the Demon. It's still running uh, up at Six Flags uh, here in the Chicago area. And it's a classic loop-to-loop uh, -loop roller coaster. So let's say the Demon is headed towards its first loop. Uh, let's take a total mass, and this is the cart and passengers, of 500 kilograms. And initially, the track will be horizontal, but just entering its loop-to-loop -loop phase. So it's, it comes down the hill. It's going horizontal, and then it just enters its loop-to-loop -loop phase, and it goes up and around and back down. And so this is our track. <clears throat> now let's label a couple points here, and, and then we'll apply uh, the given information. So uh, we know the radius of this loop is 10 meters. And we're going to say at the bottom, 
it has a horizontal speed. So right here at the bottom of the loop, it has a linear speed, and this is going to be point A, the lowest point. This is point A. V sub A is 25 meters per second. Uh, halfway up the loop will be point B. So as I come up, so here's my cart. <clears throat> Let's make a little train. It comes down the hill, and it reaches point A with a certain speed. It goes up the hill, reaches point B, so this will be point B, and then it continues all the way to the top of the track, where it's at full invert at position C, and then presumably continues around the loop. So in order for it to make it, we definitely have to start with a higher maximum uh, initial height based on conservation of energy. So um, let's label some of these points, and let's look at uh, two directions that we're going to use for our standard references uh, for something moving in a circular path. And that is the direction of uh, tangential versus uh, radial. Now, when we did horizontal problems, we didn't need to refer to this as much because the tangential acceleration was zero in uniform circular motion. But here it isn't. So the way we're going to set up this reference frame is always radial pointing inward and outward from the center of the circle and tangential pointing in the positive tangential or negative tangential, depending upon the direction that it's moving. So right here at position A, we're going to define, and I'm going to draw it down here, the negative radial direction as inward towards the center of the circle and the positive tangential region as, or uh, reference point as in the direction that the car is moving at that point. Uh, we could flip it the other way, but for integration purposes later on, we want the towards the center of the circle to be uh, negative. So this would be the positive tangential, this would be the negative tangential, just like our x and y. So this would be like positive x, or neg positive x, positive y, if you want to call it that. Then when we get to b, now our negative radial is inward, our positive tangential is up, and we went to c, negative radial inward, positive tangential, uh, the direction that the cart's moving. So as it moves around the circular path, uh, we're always going to count uh, radial towards the center or away from the center, tangential, uh, tangential to the direction of the motion at any given point. Um, now let's draw free body diagrams of the cart at these three points. And I'm going to draw these uh, on the diagram itself. So at A, I definitely have the weight of the cart. F sub G. And now it's still horizontal right before it begins to bend. And I must have some upward normal force that's greater than the weight of the cart. And the reason for this is that the cart, the track now begins to bend upward in a curved path. In order for this to curve upward, it must have some centripetal force. So that means it must have some normal force greater than Fg uh, so that it has more force inward towards the center of the circle than outward, and therefore it begins to curve upward into its circular path. So at point A, normal force is up, Fg is down. Um, there are no tangential forces, so no forces in the tangential direction yet. Now when we get to point B, gravity is still acting downward on the truck. And because of this Fg, we're going to see that um, the initial or the uh, linear speed that it had initially here at the bottom uh, must decrease because there is some acceleration in the tangential direction um, opposite the direction of motion. So not only is it continuing its circular path due to a centripetal acceleration from the uh, centripetal and centrifugal forces, but there's also going to be a, a tangential acceleration causing the linear speed to, to go down. Now, the track is still pushing inward 
on the cart. And so at point B, the centripetal force, excuse me, is going to be provided by the normal force. And that's going to be providing my centripetal acceleration. Okay, then we get up to point C. And by point C now, uh, we're at the top of the uh, circular path. And we know now that the track is above the cart. So the track is still pushing down inward on the cart. But now gravity also is pointing inward. So at point C, I have both the normal force and mg as centripetal forces. Okay? So we can see by the way the direction of the normal force changes uh, and that the direction of gravity doesn't change that we have slightly different conditions uh, for our vertical circle. So quick review, with vertical circles, we don't have uniform circular motion because of the direction of gravity relative to the path, but we can still figure out the centripetal force by summing uh, the inward and outward forces at any given point. And then if we have gravity on the way up in a vertical circle acting against the direction of the motion, it causes our linear speed to decrease Therefore, we have what we call a tangential acceleration. And then if it came back around, over here, we would have gravity acting back downward uh, on the cart in the direction it's moving. So then we're going to have a positive tangential acceleration, and V will increase. And that's why when you go on a roller coaster, when you're going up the loop, you feel it slowing down. When you get over the top, then you feel it speeding up again on your way back down. And there's the general basic setup of vertical circles.